90s, the side scroll action games were the concept to any game developer's mind. If you worked at any small third party company between the years of 1991 and 1994, your life was centered around 2D backgrounds with limited capabilities, but a lot of shit going on. It was pretty much the end of people caring about being a ship and blowing everything away out of space, and it was substituted for some type of forest animal running through labyrinths and mazes. That's still not to say there weren't any great side scroller shooting games in the 90s though. Of course there were games like Contra Hard Course, Thunder Force 3, Fantasy Star, and Super Thunder Blade, but I also remember games like Eco Fighters that never received the recognition they richly deserved. This game was made by Capcom in 1994, and because there were so many games like it, I guess a lot of people just never played it. I played it up quite a few times back in the arcade, and I would have to put this among as one of the greatest unknown shooter games of all time. It's not much background to this except that rich people have went out of space and fucked it up that they've already done this planet, and it's up to a poor couple who's in control of the universe's health. Now, I guess this guy was a former employee of one of this greedy guy's companies involved, and he stole the latest fighter jet prototype to join in this fight? I don't know. But it is pretty interesting how each level takes you through several areas of the planet, and like landfills, and you go to the ocean side, and then you have to stop people from causing acid rain in the skies. It's pretty innovative. The stage enemies are really creative too. It seem to be duplicates of what your ship looks like, but a little bit larger. First boss is a giant portlet that has the brain of a madman because it sent those other ships after you, and then I guess it decided to take on you himself. It's not really that difficult, and considering how generous this game is with all the power-ups, I don't really see how you can lose. Most of the stages can only be progressed through if you have a certain power-up that's effective. If you die, then you have to downgrade back to your regular missile. Not really a big deal though. But by destroying these enemies, or you, if you pick up where you left off, you can regain these weapons by collecting these diamonds, and then you have to pay attention to the power up meter at the bottom of the screen. The most effective power up I feel should be used early in the game is this atomic cannon. The reason I say that is because it's like a mad scientist got two highly reactive substances, just shook them up, and then mounted them onto this ship. I mean, this thing is not screw around. Now, this game has some great graphics, great designs and all, but it's not to say that there are some dickhole enemies that like to go to the far opposite side of you and fire long-range projectiles that are almost impossible to avoid. Now, you are allowed to fly in an omnidirectional pattern, but there's still always something trying to kill you. There's one dickhole enemy I like to call the back that ass ups because these things are always backing their asses up to you and they kill you in one hit. And it can be a real pain in the dick, especially like when it's more than one of them on the screen. Christ. As you reach the end of the stage, you'll encounter the boss. Most of the time you'll be blowing right past them, but then there are some that require you to do a great deal of fire. Like this big ass armada. Like, how is this thing even floating in the sky? Literally just disprove everything I've ever known about gravity. And shit, how many gunners can this Goya guy fit on this fucking thing? And I'm not sure if this was intended, but as you progress, you begin to notice that there's some mini bosses you have to reach before you reach the main boss. And they require a lot of critical damage hits too. But the main problem is fending them off and then dealing with the smaller enemies that pester around you. Man. You talk about a long battle. When you fight this giant blimp, make sure you took a nap before going into battle because this just becomes madness. It's like being a firefighter dousing out flames on a 10 story building. This shit just goes on and on. It's not even like the Armada where it had gunners attacking back. I'm just shooting. It's nice to see some fighter jets here and there though. The last stage is like going into some kind of weird subatomic world. It's almost as if the ship's strength is size and then just flew into somebody's hard drive. It's a really good opportunity to see what special power-ups may be available because in the side-scrolling shooters, you receive the best power-ups in the second to last levels, I've noticed. The first form of Goya is of his torso area flying horizontally on a jetpack. He's not too bad as long as you can stay centered. 
It's almost no reason to worry about this because I don't even think this is the real him. Oh, oh, how smart am I? It isn't him. Your main objective inside Goya's Fortress is to find the real him, but I don't think this is going to be easy, especially when you're dealing with hyper-energized shinies from the Jetsons and a giant head of a mosquito spitting bubbles at you. And then there's this part, where you're guaranteed to die. Okay, here's Goyot's final form. He's driving a Bentley out of space with rockets attached to it. Man, this is a paranoid fuck. After you destroy that, he somehow teleports into a giant robot suit, which looks like Dr. Robotnik's final form was Sonic 2. He, like Robotnik, likes to send these missiles with target lock and come directly towards you. But fortunately, you can counter each one with the missile on your own. And it's a whole lot easier than Sonic. So overall, he's really not that difficult. Once his suit of armor blows up, I guess you send him to an environmental prison for fucking up everybody's air. And then this guy gives you a final word to remember. Be conscious of the environment after I basically repolluted it by leaving behind missile shell casings, bomb ash, and piles of fractured metal debris. I mean, I can do that. But at least it's not like Captain Planet on the NES, which does nothing but pollute the environment. But I take that back about any kind of game I've ever said that had this whole eco concept, because a lot of them in the past have been really bad. But eco fighters? Hey. It makes me think there's something good about eco-friendly video games.